Hi, this is your host Sapin Bhartiya and welcome to TFR. Let's talk. And today we have with us once again, Yanni Balmas, VP of Research at Salt Security. Yanni, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to be here. Uh, and today we are going to talk about, of course, you know, uh, API security flaw that was, you know, discovered in uh, Booking.com that kind of allows, you know, full account takeover. But when I look at this case, it looks, you know, shows us, it's just kind of symptom of a, it's still a larger problem that is still there because we are talking about, you know, tech, cloud centric companies, you know, who are still going through this. So uh, before we deep dive into a larger problem, let's just quickly talk about uh, booking.com. What was discovered? How serious is that? I think your definition was very right that uh, this is not a booking.com problem, but it's a bigger issue. Specifically, what we found in booking, um, booking uses as many other websites, they have a functionality that's defined as social login. So probably you and you know anyone who browsed to any sites recently knows this. Uh, you have this button that allows you to log in to your favorite service using um, your Google account, your Twitter account, or anything like that. It kind of, it's, it's very convenient because you don't have to enter your, your own username and password, and it's very easy to, to do this. Um, but the thing is that while the functionality, the functionality is very easy for a user uh, to operate, under the hood uh, hides a lot of moving parts and a lot of technology. And if you're the service that's trying to implement this kind of uh, functionality into your service, there's really so many points where you can go wrong. Uh, and since you know this is your authentication endpoint, it's a very sensitive place. And sometimes even the minor, the most minor issues can lead to uh, very, very, very uh, catastrophic uh, impact. Uh, and that's exactly what we found in Booking, basically a flow that they had there uh, with their uh, Facebook login functionality allowed us uh, to basically take over uh, any account that's using this functionality or even accounts that are not using the functionality but are just logged into Facebook uh, while the attack uh, undergoes. Uh, so we're talking about millions of users uh, for Booking.com. It's a very serious issue. And yes, that, that, that was basically the issue. When we look at these social logins and rely on technologies, uh, standards like OAuth, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, whenever possible, uh, I do have separate rotating passwords for different services, but I also use social login, especially for things that I uh, log in from different devices, especially mobile devices, because that makes things uh, easier. But when we look at cases like that, then we're like, hey, you know what? It's easier, but is it really that secure? So um, what I want to ask you is that talk a bit about what went wrong there so that we can also learn some lessons from it? I perfectly understand your approach here. And I think it's security wise, it's really the best practice. But let's be frank about it. How many people uh, can do this? Uh, and I, I, I can, you know, I can say for myself that although I'm a, you know, I'm a security researcher and I practice this, I love social login. I use it all the time. It prevents me from, you know, uh, remembering a lot of passwords. Uh, and it's a great thing. Under the hood, uh, this kind of functionality, there is an industry standard protocol called OAuth, or uh, some extension to it called OIDC. And this is kind of the industry standard protocol that supports this kind of functionality of social login. Um, and it's a wonderful functionality, but again, as I mentioned, the mechanics of it are pretty complex. And to put it in simpler terms, it's pretty easy for you as a service or a site administrator to put uh, or to integrate social login into your site, a working social login into your site. It's very, very hard to do it securely. Uh, and and, and th this combination of something that's very popular and the user experience that it provides is, is, is fantastic on one hand, while on the other, the technical difficulties of implementing it correctly, um, security-wise, this can be sometimes, you know, an explosive combination. And that's, in fact, what we see. And, and Booking.com is just one use case uh, for this problem. As you mentioned before, the, the, the issue is much, much, much larger. 
Uh, in fact, we already have several other targets which we didn't publish yet, uh, which are we found that are vulnerable to different flavors of the same of the same issue. I want to get a bit deeper into technical details of what went wrong here in the context of OAuth, how serious it was, was it limited just to bookings.com or it goes beyond that? First of all, let, let's try to answer it step by step. First of all, um, where is the issue? Because basically when you're talking about social login, you have three parties involved here. You have the user, you have booking.com or the site that you are trying to log into, and there is the entity that will, you know, confirm that the user is the user, which in this case is Facebook, right? So that's the third party that should uh, should be trusted. Now, the thing with OAuth that the user never needs to send his username password to Booking.com. Never at any stage, it it doesn't need to happen. All he needs to do is to tell Booking.com, "Hey, I want to log in using Facebook. So please, Booking.com, go to Facebook and verify that." I'm really me. Uh, that, that, that's really me. And Facebook will, will do that. I don't have to share anything with you. If Facebook will need anything from me, they will ask me for my password. And I, I, I only want to work with Facebook and Facebook alone. That's the main concept behind behind this thing. Now, as you can as you can understand, there's a lot of moving parts here. You need to pass some kind of trust between the user, then booking.com, and then this trust needs to be also shared with facebook.com. So it's very complex to do that. Uh, and it's and it gets even more complex when you're talking about the fact that you don't have only one authenticating endpoint, you have several of them. One is for your desktop clients, another is for your mobile clients, another is for maybe some other services Booking provides. And you can see how deep this rabbit hole goes. It starts being more and more and more and more complex. And in terms of, you know, the service providers, Booking.com, in, in this instance, it's very, very, very hard for them to, you know, try and fine tune and pinpoint and find every security feature. And that brings us to the second point. So who is responsible for this? Is it the user? Is it booking or is it Facebook? Where is the problem? Um, and, and, and the problem, let me tell you, is not on the user's side. It's also not on Facebook's side. Facebook and the user are doing everything as designed as they were supposed to do. The problem in this specific case lies in booking.com. It's not that they did anything wrong. It, it's the way that they implemented OAuth. There was one very small minor glitch in there, uh, which is very, very hard to find. It's not, it's not apparent. You can't see that. But if you're an attacker and if you know the protocol well enough, you may be able to pinpoint that just as we did. And once you do, the impact is dramatic because as we said, millions, you can immediately take over millions of users uh, in booking.com and by the way it doesn't stop there because the ecosystem is even more complex than that uh, i'll give you an example uh kayak.com right it's kind of a sister site or brother site for booking.com they are both um under the same mothership mother company uh, booking holdings and the thing is that kayak.com allows users to log into kayak using your booking credentials and so the same vulnerability that we found in Booking immediately uh, kind of affects Kayak as well. And, and it ke- keeps getting worse as this ecosystem, you know, keeps getting bigger and bigger. So the problem lies with Booking. Uh, obviously, we reported everything to them. Booking acted wonderfully. I must say they were very professional. They dealt with everything and they fixed everything almost immediately once we reported it. And obviously, the vulnerability is not there anymore, but it was there once we found it. This flaw was kind of specific to Booking.com and, of course, associated website. But can there be more vulnerabilities like these in the world? Yeah, I touched that point a bit before, but I'll try to elaborate now. Um, Yeah, we found this thing in Booking. Uh, OAuth, as I said, it's an industry standard. Everywhere that you see uh, social login functionality, 99.9% 99.9% that behind the scenes, OAuth is, is, is taking place there. So it, it's, it, it should be there. It's uh, what I'm trying to say that it's very, very, very common. Um, and yeah, this problem is definitely not specific to booking.com. In fact, we already have found additional vulnerabilities in other very popular sites. 
uh, again, with their OAuth functionality, it's not always the same problem, but it's always a problem within OAuth. There may be many flavors of these issues, and there are many places where you can go wrong when implementing OAuth. Um, and everyone should be considered as potentially vulnerable to, to, to this, right? You need to, I think the main takeaway for service owners and service providers is that if you use OAuth, you better go and make sure and, and, and check and check and check again that all your implementation details are correct and that you don't expose your users to any unnecessary security flows. You can do that in many ways. You can do that in internal audit, external audit. You can use third parties uh, to help you protect where you missed. And really, there's dozens of solutions. Uh, you can use one of them or many of them. Uh, as long as you understand that this place uh, is a place that's probably crawling with vulnerabilities, uh, you will be in a much better place. Of course, it's not that easy but if i ask you what advice you have for companies so that they can take some steps they can have some practices in place to ensure that things like these won't happen as long as we're writing software these things will continue to happen but still we can take some steps to ensure that customer data remains safe that's a very generic question i would say and i, and I will give you a, i will give you a very generic answer uh, so uh, in my point of view when you're implementing technology the first thing that you need is to understand that this technology never 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 implement something that you don't feel that you deeply understand. Uh, and and it, if you don't have this knowledge internally within your organization, that's perfectly fine. You can, uh, you know, seek uh, other parties that have this knowledge and will be able to advise you on that. And, and that's really true for any technology that you're using. And specifically for technologies that support authentication or authorization, because these are very, very, very critical points within any uh, website or web service uh, uh, flow. That would be one thing, uh, one advice. The other advice would say, you know, yeah, even if you know the technology and even if you went through every line of code, uh, still you might be able to miss things and these things happen and it's okay. It can happen to everyone. I think it will also be wise for every organization to uh, have a second line of defense, uh, which usually will come uh, in the form of, you know, a third party uh, security products that you can implement that will help you, uh, you know, try to detect or prevent uh, this kind of uh, type of attacks or that kind of, uh, of attacks. And that's really the, the best practice for every CISO, I think. I think most of the, the best CISOs in the world work exactly uh, in this methodology. And again, there is no foolproof. Even if you do everything, you can still be vulnerable. And that's perfectly okay, but you need to try and minimize uh, your exposure as much as possible. And once you find something, you need to be reactive and, 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 and uh, react to it as quickly and as efficiently as you can. That would be my, my generic advice. Yannick, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic and also uh, share some of the insights that, you know, these technologies, how they actually make us users more secure, to be honest with you, using a lot like things versus using uh, password one, two, three, you know, it's much more secure to use social login to, to log into because then once the problem is fixed, you're safe and secure. So thank you for sharing all those insights and I would love to have you back on the show. I hope there will not be too many uh, breaches so that we talk every week, <laughs> but I would still love to talk to you frequently. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was completely my, my pleasure.